dither effect. It's a pretty popular effect going around in graphic design, and I, I just felt in 2024, we kind of fun if I just introduced tutorials like this again. And if you guys enjoy it, you guys enjoy it. If you guys don't, we just, just don't do it. But I thought it'd be kind of fun, so let's just let's just hop into it. Also, as per usual, do not forget to check out the Everything Pack. It's the first link in the description down below, where you basically get all my products, all custom-made products by me on my Selfie page right now, literally all of them on one purchase, plus all future products for free, no matter the price, forever. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing started. So what you're gonna have to do, of course, is throw in your photo, size it up the way you would like it, and if it already is not a smart object, I want you to right-click on it and convert it into a smart object, and you're good to start. So the reason why you're doing that for the record is so we can actually take the file at the very end if we need to switch out the photo. It could just be super easy to switch it out and you're just, you're good to go. Two things we're gonna do is we're gonna make two different gray layers and apply some effects on them. That way it starts the actual overall idea of what the dither effect should do. So first layer, make a new layer, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and just press Control A to select the entire canvas. If you're new for the record of my channel, I do a lot of shortcuts, but we got I got you. I'll put it like, like right here. Okay. Anyway, control A to select the entire canvas. Then we're gonna also just go ahead and press M on our keyboard to actually get the uh, rectangle marquee tool. This will allow us when we right click to right click, use fill, and then drop down our contents on 50% gray. So we press okay, and we can press control D to deselect or deselect just like so. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna filter, camera raw filter, and we're gonna go under where it says effects, camera raw filter changed hate it. And we're going to go where it says grain. And we're going to take this grain and put this all the way up to 100. Take your size at 25. And then your roughness is at 50. And if you really want to, we can also go into where it says, uh, how do you say detail? No, where is that again? No, it's also under effects. Troll. And we're going to take our texture and just throw this up by about 10. And you're pretty good to go. Press OK. This will basically act as our first sort of effect. Like I said, dither effect, kind of setting it up for us. But we're also going to make sure we take the blend mode and put it on overlay. And that gives us this cool little effect. Just so far, so good. The typical grain. We can move on. We're also going to name this grain because I'll put the PSD in the description down below. So I got to name some of these layers. OK, anyway, this next gray layer that we're going to press, of course, another new layer. Control A once again, right click with the M tool, fill 50 percent gray, deselect it. But this new gray, we're going to take a filter and use uh, filter gallery. This is gonna have two different effects on it. You're gonna see them being activated. I have halftone pattern and reticulation. So if you go over here where it says sketch, drop this down, second to last row, click on the middle, just like so, you're on reticulation, and you want your density to be at 40%, your foreground level to be at 15%, and your background level to be at 3%, and uh, if you guys did not know, you don't have to exit to apply more filter galleries. This little plus button down here, you click on it just like so. It'll give you guys another duplicate of your previous one. But this new duplicate one, we're going to take and use a halftone pattern, which is directly up left of the actual articulation. But this time, the size is going to be at two, contrast is on 10, and your pattern can either be on dot, circle, or line. I think I'm going to use dot for this instance. I think dot just looks a little bit better. Circle is really cool. Line is also incredibly cool, but I'm just going to use dot because why not? I don't want to forget that we're going to make sure we also take this on normal and put it on overlay. And just so far, so good. We got ourselves a nice little sort of effect kind of happening right before our eyes. So what we're going to do now is going to select our first layer on the top, hold shift on our keyboard, select the bottom layer. It'll select all the layers in between. We're going to right click and then convert this into our smart object. And we're just going to call this the start. Sure. OK, so one of the start, we're going to go over here to where it says our adjustments layers and we're going to use a nice threshold right here. And this we're going to just take this. It looks really cool already for the record. We're going to just take this to kind of give us the most the best contrast that we got out of this. It just helps with figuring out how much density you kind of want in the highlights and shadows. But for now, though, we're going to take these two layers. So control click on them, press control G to group them together. This is the first group. And we're also going to press control G again to group it inside another group. And this is, of course, the second group but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this first group here and double click on this we're gonna go to the blending options go under blend if and under the current layer take this black uh anchor point and move it towards the right just about until it gets like 10 or 15 percent or so is when the actual color will go away or the black will go away and that's basically what this is doing if you want to take it move it always to the right the black will go away if you hold alt just food for thought if you hold alt you can split the anchor and give yourself just a little bit more control of what's happening but we're gonna take the entire thing and make it to about 15 so that way we know there's no black left 
we're gonna press okay and we're gonna go but as you guys might notice of course the photo itself is gone so the way we bring that back in for a second to go back into the first group take your duplicate or excuse me take your photo layer hold alt and then duplicate it outside of the group just like so and then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a nice little adjustments solid color make this black press OK, right click, and then convert this, or not convert this as an object, but make it a clip mask just like so. And like I said before, this is just bringing the photo back and we're now we're set. Now, the last little thing that we're gonna have to do though, to actually just bring this, you know, finally in together, is under this first or the second group layer options, we're gonna double click on the actual second group to get into the layer styles of the second group, not the first group, okay? We're gonna go under drop shadow and we're gonna take our color and make this a little bit of like a grayish white tone. So right now I'm at DF, DF, DF. You wanna copy that hex tone, put it in your color, press okay. And the distance I'm on two, the spread I'm on zero and the size I'm on zero and my overall, oh, my angle is on negative 90. If I press okay, I zoom in for a second to show you guys what's going on. If I turn off the uh, the drop shadow, you guys can see, just, it just adds a little bit more depth and kind of gives you a little bit more of that, uh, how do you say, it's depth and contrast. Yeah, that's it. Now, now the fun part starts to happen though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this second group and we're gonna duplicate this two more times. So you're gonna have three total copies of the second overall grouping. So with this though, we're gonna take a color fill, just like so, press okay on the black is fine for now, right click, convert it to a uh, mask, excuse me, and then we're gonna take alt and then drag a, a color fill on every single one of these duplicated groups. So there's gonna be three color fills and three groups in total, just like so. Now on the top most color fill, we're gonna make this color a nice grayish tone. So I'm gonna say like, C, uh, we'll go with D3, D3, D3 as the hex tone for this. Press OK. Now the middle color fill, we're gonna double click on this. If I type in D3, 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 I'm gonna take this one and drag this a little bit further down. So I'm gonna say this time it's gonna be A, C, A, C, A, C. Press OK. Now on the third most, or I guess the original group, but the third most color fill on the bottom, we're gonna take this one and pretty much just make this pretty much a little bit more of a darker gray. I would say like a 4E, 4E is pretty decent. Press OK. So the reason why we did this, if now we go up to the top most layer again, drop it down so I can see all the contents inside. This threshold here, I can double click on this, and we wanna basically tune these thresholds to give us the best contrast possible. Now, the only tip I can pretty much give you guys is the lightest tone color fill equals the heaviest, or excuse me, the highest level threshold. So whatever, this top layer is gonna have the highest level threshold. So I'm gonna take my threshold level, throw this all the way up to like 200 plus, I'll say like 215 is good for me, and I'm good. Now the middle layer, drop down this one, threshold over here. This one should be less uh, threshold level, so it's not gonna be up here, right? It's gonna be less, but not like, you don't have to be dramatically less. I'll say like a 170, 175 looks pretty good. Now the third most color fill, drop down this. This one should pretty much remain below 170, of course. We're gonna kind of keep it right around here just a hundred for my ocd please okay so a hundred so you're gonna see of course the lighter it is the higher the uh the actual overall threshold is we have 215 for me for the top one we have 175 for the second one and the third one i have at uh 100 i believe right now i'm gonna, do is gonna close all these groups together for a second close all of these down keep it nice and clean for you guys for the actual overall thing and what i'm gonna do now is just gonna gonna add in a gradient and call it a day Realistically though, I'm dead serious. Like it, it, we are done. But the fun part is, of course, is when you go uh, go ahead and add some gradients and more additional textures. So on my under my finishing touches, for the record, my gradient that I have in here goes as followed. I have a nice little darker purple gray, or excuse me, a nice little darker purple, which acts as my background color, or basically whatever is black on the canvas of the overall thing over here, whatever is black, right, will be purple. So that way, whatever's on the left is your, controls your background. If you guys did not know this, the way gradients work, whatever's on the left controls your background slash black tone, whatever is on right controls the white tones, which is usually your foreground tones. So if I wanted to make this actual overall background black, I can just take this and make this black, press OK. If I want to make this green or my highlight color not green, I can just make it pink. And I can just make, take my mid-tones that's happening over here, move this over, kind of clean this up for a second. I'll, I'll delete this one for a second. And then just take this and just make this a little bit of a blue. And if I want the kind of blue to be a little more subtle, I'll take another duplicate or I'll click, I'll click on the pink one, make a duplicate next to the blue. And now I can give myself a lot less blue happening, but it can still pop up just like so. This is like the designing portion of it. That's You got the effect done. Now we're into the designing part. So I'm gonna say, that's that's pretty cool but then of course you add in your typography if you guys wish to and of course i also added in another bitmap texture sort of idea which is for my bitmap texture pack 
I had to. That's pretty much all I got. I think it's just a super sick, really fun effect. And I think it's just, just, I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. That's all. So with that being said, that is the end of the video here today. So don't forget to check out the everything pack, the first in the description per usual, always. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. So HQ out. You have to get to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking proud of guys. Later, much love, peace, enjoy your day. And uh, yeah, I'm out. If you guys enjoy, leave a like. I need to know if you guys want these kind of stuff again. I, I like it. You'd let me know.